Hey, what's up landlords? If you're like me, then you are finding it increasingly more difficult to find good deals out there. I mean, this real estate market right now is all topsy-turvy. Interest rates are up, so our mortgage payments are higher. And so that's squeezing our cash flow down to nil and property values are dropping. So when we go to refi on a deal, the appraisals aren't coming back with, at what they need to be coming back at. The math just ain't mathing. Now, I know that this may seem like a problem, but when there's a will, there's a way. The beautiful thing about real estate is that there's always room to make money. There's always ways to make money. We just have to adjust our investing strategy just a little bit. So what we are going to do in this video is I'm actually going to show you a recording that I already did a few days ago on how to make money in an upside down market using these spreadsheet, well, this main spreadsheet with multiple tabs, and I'm gonna show you how to use this spreadsheet. There are a couple ways that we can, or I should say there are a couple variables that we can change to make sure that we make money even when deals are looking really crazy out here because they wasn't looking crazy a couple years ago. Now they're looking crazy, okay? But it's all right. I need you to watch this video from start to finish because in this spreadsheet, there's multiple tabs and I need you to know how to use all the tabs. We're not going, we actually don't go through all of them. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, but there is a couple that I really need you to pay attention to. This is this video is also going to show you how to analyze a deal if you're very confused about how to analyze a deal. This spreadsheet is gold. Now, here's the beautiful thing. This spreadsheet that I'm going over, there's a, actually a better version. I formatted some things and jazz it up just a little bit. The spreadsheet is down below in the description. So all you gotta do is go down there, download the spreadsheet and watch the tutorial from start to finish so you don't miss anything and your gold. All right, let's get into this. I need to have a very hard conversation with you guys and nobody's nobody's going to like this. We are going we are already probably officially entered into a recession. The government is not going to say it, but things have been intentionally turned upside down. Interest rates are up, so all of the math tools and formulas that you go into with the birth strategy that you used to go into the birth strategy with, they're no longer are making too much sense, right? Before I was, when I was talking to Jay today, he was talking about, yeah, I was buying properties uptown for $25,000, $30,000. Best way I can describe it to you, my quad, I bought, it was a complete gut, RM1 property, big enough for a quad. I bought it for $45,000 in 2019, Okay. How much you think you can get something like that for in West Philly today? Not that. All right. And so the numbers just made so much sense. Now, what's happening because interest rates are up, which again, this was designed this way because interest rates are up. People, interest rates make people make it so that people can buy less home for their dollars. Buyers look at homes in terms of mortgage payments. How much home can I afford per month? And so when interest rates go up, they're going to be able to afford less home. And so those homes are driving down your ARVs. A lot of us have seen this mid rehab. When, you know, nine months ago when they bought the deal, they thought it was going to be one thing. They go to exit the deal and the ARV is just not what it needs to be. So we need to factor that. Let me tell y'all something. This is going to be like this. These prices are going to be down. It's going to be like this for a little while now. It's going to be like this for at least a year. Now, let me just say this. I have predicted, accurately predicted. Remember, I used to do my show on YouTube. I have accurately predicted almost every financial, real estate financial change that we have had in the last couple of, in the last year. Last September, I started my uh my my show on YouTube and I said hey guys we're going to start seeing the return of twenty thirty thousand dollar homes and people was like no nah. and then that's what happened and then I said hey you know interest rates are going to go all the way up until the summertime and people was like no nah. and then that's what happened and so I'm telling you guys that things are shifting is this bad news it's absolutely not bad news 
We just need to make sure that we understand how to run our numbers and how to take advantage of things. Okay. A couple of things that's happening before I pulled out this spreadsheet, a couple of things that's happening that is making things a little bit frustrated is that sellers, retail sellers, like when you go to buy these homes off market, retail sellers, they aren't getting the memo. So a lot of times they want too much for their homes that makes so that the deals don't make sense. And so they don't, they don't really know how to price their homes in this market right now. And I want to make sure that you guys understand what to do so you are not losing money. So it's two things you have to factor into this whole entire formula. It, it's in the title of this talk. Falling home prices and rising mortgage payments via rising interest rates. That changes the game. So Eddie said, is this Philly specific? Prices are dropping here, yet they keep building. That's a great question. <laughs> That's a bad thing, right? And this is why I'm saying that this is going to be a problem for a while because there's going to be a lot of supply. When supply is high, that means prices are down. That means it's going to drop prices down. Okay. Now, I don't know because there is a shortage. I am not an economist. I don't know how much one is going to wash the other out, but Prices are dropping everywhere. Is it dropping in every single market in the U.S.? No, but the Fed hopes it does. That's their plan. I don't want to fight against the Fed. Good. I'm glad prices aren't dropping there, but beware they might in six or nine months. That's the whole plan. Remember, inflation is still high. They got to get inflation down. The only way they can get, well, the main way they can get inflation down is by dropping home prices. Nothing has changed from last year when they said, we don't care where this is our main goal is to get inflation down to 2%. We're still not there. Okay, thank you for all the understood. Let's pull out the spreadsheet. Do I expect rates to continue to rise? Possibly, yes. So, slower, but yes. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. I mean, Eddie, you're in the DMV area. That's like, this is a money in DMV area. People are wealthier and that's what it is. It hasn't hit yet. And this is what really the Fed is, they're in a, they're in a battle right now. They are intentionally trying to get people, like you said, it's crazy, crazy here. People are still buying houses. They're looking at that and it's like, hey, we're trying to get people to slow down and they won't. People are buying homes in California. Absolutely. I mean, this is a different market. People just love it here. <laughs> it just is what it is. But we have to be prepared that yesterday's ARV ain't going to be today's ARV. That's really the conversation that I want to have with you right now and planning for the fact that the ARV, even if it's crazy and it's going up, we need to buy like it's going to come down. All right. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at this spreadsheet? Let me know in the chat. I sent it out for free to non-members and members. Let me know in the chat. I keep saying no. Y'all downloaded it. Y'all downloaded it and uh, didn't get it. Yes, this is the one I sent out for free. Ralph said the spreadsheet is bomb. Oh, bing. So Mark, who is a mortgage professional, said appraisals have been coming in low for a while. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. All right. So let me blow this up because some of y'all is like, that is way too small. And it's too small for me. And I'm sitting right here, right in front of it. Okay. All right. This spreadsheet is very simple. I gave it away for free. 
to everyone in my in, in our list, members, non-members, non-members, y'all have had access to this for forever. What was the subject with the email with the spreadsheet? Hey, here's my free spreadsheet. <laughs> free spreadsheet. I don't know. I can't remember the subject. I sent out a couple of emails about it. Then we had a lot of downloads. Okay. All right. So this spreadsheet is very simple. I want to walk you through how to use it. And um, I actually have an accompanying spreadsheet that, because I'm going to send you all this. I can send you all this other accompanying spreadsheet. I just now thought about it. Um, give me one second. I want, it's going to really help you all out. It's going to really, 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 really help you out. Perfect. I'm going to send this to y'all. Y'all might have to give me a couple of, um, maybe till tomorrow. I'm going to send this other spreadsheet to y'all. We're going to start with this one first. So I got a little spreadsheet that's, may need to be adjusted because of inflation. It's a couple years old, but this will help you to estimate rehab costs. In the Philly area, that's another thing. Rehab costs are very regional because of just inflation in different areas, cost of things in different areas, but also like... Um, the topography and the ecology of a different area would cause for something to be more expensive or like, for instance, roofs in Philadelphia ain't the same as roofs in California. They don't got to deal with moisture issues in California the same way we got to deal with moisture issues. So it's just a different ball game. Is it cheaper? Not saying that. But what I'm saying is pricing is going to be different because it's different types of roofs. OK. So here is something that is really kind of basic. You can plug these numbers in. I would just automatically increase everything by maybe like 10, 20%. But what you can do, I mean, I could probably actually increase some of this stuff for you before sending it out. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to increase some of this stuff for you before sending it out. Um, you can take these numbers and drop them into the other spreadsheet that I sent you. But I'm going to send you an updated one of that one as well to estimate your rehab costs. Okay. The other thing is, the other thing that you can do is just flat out say that it's about $100 per square foot right now for rehab, which is high because we've been using 80 for years and that's been a good number, but inflation is real. All right. All right. Now let's come back over to the other spreadsheet. Okay, real quick, we got to pause right here for just a second. It's some important announcements that I need you to know about. We're going to go through the announcements real quick, and then we're going to come right back into the spreadsheet so that we can really dig into this thing. Our construction management class is coming up. You guys, we only do this class twice a year. For those of you who have not done this class, you need to do it. When I say need, you need to take this class. Members, you need to do this class, okay? Don't be sad when it's not around and you're like, uh, you know, I wish I can get in the next class. We have tons of testimonials. I've been posting them. I've been sending them out. We got people in here that have taken the class. Y'all already know how I roll. Alyssa, Eddie, please tap in. I was just talking to Jay. Jay, y'all know our member that does the lead testing. And he was like, Yo, who was, I was talking about something else, but he just, I mentioned construction management class. He was like, this is why I always tell people they need to dead cast, take that class because that class was a game changer. I It changed my life. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Please sign up for this class. Members, y'all get 25% off no matter where we are in our early bird pricing. Okay. So check the chat for the discount code and sign up. We literally only have a few spots left. We're only doing it virtual for a few people because It'd be a lot of questions. And we want to make sure that you guys get the care that you need. It's an expensive class. Okay. Eddie said, the class is dope. Thank you. Alyssa said, everyone sign up for the class. Thank you very much. Anybody else in here that took the class? Pull up. All right. Next announcement. 
Women in Real Estate Summit. All right. So look, right. I told myself I was going, I wasn't going to do this, but we're doing this Women in Real Estate Summit again. I'm really excited because out of all the things that I do, this is by far my favorite, favorite thing. Like, I feel like this is my purpose is doing large events. Okay. I cannot describe to you how it makes me feel alive. I would tell y'all some inappropriate jokes, but I am a lady and I will not do that. It makes me feel alive. That is all I will say. So what I need you guys to understand is that you need to be there. The reason why this is something that is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing is because I have this weird gift of making sure that I craft an event to make sure people get value. There are some events that people go to and it's entertaining and it's fun, but it's not really valuable. Like walk away with a game plan. I got y'all. I'm really excited because one of our big name sponsors just came on today. So I'm excited. But what I want to do is I'm not going to, I think some of y'all is like, oh, I'm waiting until we, till you do this, the announcements of the speakers to know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell y'all a couple of the speakers that's going to be there. And this is a secret. Don't y'all tell nobody. Okay. We got a couple of recurring people. We got Asia from Detroit, Asia Denson, the lady contractor. We have Rachel Pritzker recurring. We got Lindsay Smith. I think she's Lindsay, the agent. She's a big time insurance agent. She's also a real estate investor. We have a woman named Jen Maldonado. She is a big time investor. She does flips out here um, in Redondo Beach. Just want to let y'all know, average price is like two, three million. Okay. I'm going to let y'all know that. She does apartment buildings. She's down in Texas. She's in Puerto Rico. She's investing all over. We've got a woman named, her Instagram name is Sis Shanika. A couple of y'all follow her. I saw when I went to her page, she's got a lot of followers. She's doing a lot of big things. We have Rashawna Scott coming back. She's a flipper in Detroit and an agent. She's, I think she's a broker. And I'm not going to share anybody else. So let y'all know, make sure you get your ticket. Um, couple of y'all pull up. I'm not going to tell y'all anybody else. It is going to be a all star studded cast. Plus I am crafting everything to make sure y'all walk out of there with another deal. Walk in with nothing and got had no money. We're going to walk out with a deal. Okay. Under contract. Okay. All right. All right. That's enough of announcements. Let's hop back into this. How many guys, how many of you would appreciate this spreadsheet right here where it lays out the cost of everything? And so you can look at a property. Once you start to get good at analyzing deals, you can look at a property and just plug and play the numbers. Oh, it needs a new roof. Okay, this is how much it costs. Oh, we need new electric. Electric. This is how much it costs. You can plug and play. All right, Alyssa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's come back over to this spreadsheet. So in the color cell, so, yep, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a copy of this cheat sheet. I'm gonna give you all a bundle. I'm gonna send it out to y'all tomorrow because this spreadsheet, I added another um another tab to it. Okay, so this spreadsheet is specifically designed for you to plug in your rehab and construction budget and see how much everything is gonna cost. So you wanna only fill out the color cells, right? Your purchase price, this is here. Your, you know what? Let me pause. I want to start with the new tab that I already, that I just made for you. Because this one, I'm going to blow everything up even more. The reason I'm going to start with this tab is because it'll be easier to work backwards. So when I was going through the spreadsheet, I was like to, prep like how I'm going to do my talk I was like you know what I can make something that is a little more comprehensive for everyone and so that's when I ended up making this L Irish just sent you a message so Rob the that's another that's another spreadsheet again when I went to sit down and do this Today, to make sure I prepare for y'all, I was like, no, I want to give them more stuff. <laughs> and so I was like, let me go through everything and then teach them. And then I'm going to send out the bundle tomorrow. It's 
another tab in this spreadsheet and a whole nother spreadsheet. I'll probably just put it in one spreadsheet. How about that? That makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to do that. All right. So this one is the one that's hot fire flames. Okay. All right. So when you go to get, you're looking at a deal, you want to analyze a deal. We're going to say, okay, our acquisition and say, hey, this is how much the property costs. I just made up a number, 85,000. Let's say the rehab budget is 115. The current ARV is 300,000. We've uh, in, investigated that and figured that out. We've already run our comps. Now, remember, property prices are falling and they're going to continue to fall because the Fed is designing it that way. So what you're going to need to do is take a stance at what you think home prices, how much they're expected to decline. And so once you put this in here, it'll then just spit out a projected ARV. Let me box this in. You don't have to do anything with that. So it's basically saying, hey, you think it's going to be 300000 right now, but when you're done with this rehab in nine months, it's going to be worth two seventy, just to be on the safe side. Okay, y'all know how... Um, I'm looking at these notes. Eddie, you're such a distracting element. <laughs> um, y'all know how we always say, hey, is this a 65% deal? Is it an 85% deal? Or I mean, 65 or 75% deal? Here, what I want you to do is the reason I'm putting this here is because we've been saying, hey, you need to be all in at 75%. If you don't know what that means, let me know. You need to be all in at 75%. But right now, because things are a little wonky, in order to make sure we're making money, we're going to need to be all in. We're going to need to adjust this. So let's say we're going to need, we say we want to be all in at 60%. So our, that means our room for profit it's 40%. So we can go ahead and update this. Oh. Okay. So what does that mean? That means our maximum allowable offer, even though I'm going to change this to the asking. Even though the asking is 85, that means, hey, if we're really trying to be safe out here because of rising prices, falling uh, interest rates, I mean, rise, falling prices and rising interest rates, that means we need to all be all in at 60%. So our maximum allowable offer for this property is 47000 The thing about this, what I'm sharing with you right now, this is not too far off from what we've been seeing. Now, I feel like some sellers and some wholesalers are getting smart. And so this number, this asking is getting closer to what the maximum allowable offer is. Right? Like before it was, there was one at 85, but we've been seeing... Numbers drop and drop and drop. 55. Okay, that's more like it. Okay, Danita said, what range should we use to estimate the decline? I mean, I, I'm hoping it's not more than 10%. If we're dropping 20%, that's a that means this is a catastrophic fall. What the Fed wants to do is a soft landing. What all economists want to do is a soft landing. In a year, you don't want your home prices to climb more than 10%. That's wild. That's wilder than wild. So I can't tell you, you're going to have to make a stance. Anything more than 10%, I feel like is insane. That's a problem. We and It's a free for all. It's 2008 all over again. Eddie said, are y'all seeing rents rise up that way? No, we're seeing rents fall. Oh, Odata said, no, Eddie. <laughs> no, Eddie. Roger. <laughs> That's who you are. You Roger from Sister Sister, Eddie. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I said New York rents are in Sadie, New York City. Of course, that's just what it is. But I heard that they're falling or are they increasing. I don't know. I, New York City is a whole other country. That is, <laughs> go home, Roger. <laughs> ah, that is the perfect description of Eddie. Um, yeah, I yeah, said so that there, New York is a whole nother beast. Like, are you investing in New York? 
the short term rental law is crazy. Yeah, I here's the thing. I have never, ever, ever been a fan of investing for Airbnb or like running your numbers against it because I told members this for those of y'all who are that members. I said this years ago, 2017, 2018, 2019. Leave the Airbnb alone because y'all not going to be able to contend with the hotel lobbyists. Airbnb is trying to put a whole sector out of business, a whole sector that's just been a sector for forever. Y'all y'all can't go up against that. This is not a thing. And so the hotel lobbyists, they say, okay, we're going to wait and we're going to strike while the iron's hot. And then they getting put out in every city. No way. Okay, back to the focus. Do y'all understand the top part of this, right? This is where you can manipulate your numbers. Now, this rehab budget, this is really quickly. This rehab budget, that's why I showed y'all the other spreadsheet because you're going to plug your numbers into the spreadsheet with all of the rehab line items and then come up with the total. Let's go back over there too, just to remind you. If y'all getting value from this, real quick, go and um, text it to like three people and be like, yo, you need to come up in here because she's giving a whole nerd game, the nerd portion of the game, the part that everybody don't be wanting to give. They just want to sell y'all on, on the fancy cars and, and the, uh, the, the name brand clothing. But they don't want to tell you, you got to be a nerd a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I said facts, girl. Yes. Um. All right. So look, right? So once you plug everything in, you take this number, total it up, total job is 121. These are just fake numbers, okay? It's just not the numbers that we're using. This whole scenario, everything is not real. All right, so you're gonna take that number. Once you plug everything in, you're gonna take that number and drop it in. Now, what I would suggest though too, is when you do this spreadsheet, when you take this spreadsheet, add another tab, leave these numbers the same. Add another tab, copy everything over, paste it, and then start deleting the line items that you don't need. Right? Like, oh, I know I'm not going to need plumbing. Boom, delete that, delete that, delete that, so you can get an accurate calculation. And then name the tab, the, the address that you're looking at. And then once you move on from a deal, you can just go ahead and delete that. So... Odata said for the rehab are you using hundred dollars square foot or pulling from the rehab number for, for you guys, we we're getting, we're getting sophisticated. We're going to pull from these rehab numbers. Now, here's the thing. None of these numbers don't hold me to these numbers. I'm not, I'm not giving you an actual estimate. These are just rough estimates for those of you who are not contractors. And you're just like, what is the average cost of trim? What is the average cost of such and such? And right next to these notes, and I'm going to tell you, I got this from the guys over at Crowdcopia. When we used to do our show, um, Hard Money Mondays, I don't know if y'all remember that, they gave this out. Shout out to Crowdcopia. Trying to work them for some sponsorships of Wire. They, here they go. They get a free sponsorship credit right now. <laughs> Waiting on them to let me know what they going to do. Okay. All right. So shout out to them though, for real, for real. They gave us this spreadsheet, but this was from a couple of years ago. I'm going to update these numbers with what I see fit. But again, it, nothing's going to replace you actually talking to a GC, but this is just to help you to entertain whether this deal is a good deal or not. All right, let's come back over to the spreadsheet. If you don't feel like doing all this and you know it's a full gut, just go ahead and use hundred dollars a square foot. All right. All right. So y'all know how to plug these numbers in. If you want to say, hey, room for profit, let's do, let's keep it at 65%. Hey, your maximum allowable offer now is 60,500. All right. Okay. Now let's start talking about, does this deal, is it going to make sense in the long run? Okay. Now, first thing you need to know, when you go to do your cash out, you're going to need to know what is the bank going to let me cash out at? Some banks are saying 75%. Some of them will go up to 85%. The interest rate be high as Jesus, but <laughs> I couldn't think of another phrase that was clean. And then I ended up person <laughs> using the God's name in vain. The interest rate going to be high as a kite <laughs> if you go to 85%. But 
here, you can change it, whatever you want it to be, all right? So this is going to be your loan amount. Now, what's your interest rate? You're going to need to have this conversation with Mark or whoever you're doing your hard money, I mean, your, your Burr loan with, your DSCR loan with. If y'all don't know what that means, let me know in the chat. You're going to have a conversation. What are interest rates at now? You're also going to need to make a prediction. What are interest rates going to be at nine months when you're done your rehab? Hmm. Mark, what's the interest rate on a DSCR loan right now? Let me know in the chat, please. Okay. Life loan in years, 30 years. That's pretty standard. You might do, some people get funky and they want to pay their mortgages off quickly. They got good high paying jobs that they don't plan on leaving forever. And they like, let's get busy. I don't need no, I don't need no, uh, no profit right now. Let's pay it off in 15 years. We can change that to 15. I left this. I did not make this green. Leave it alone. Number of payments per year. I'm assuming you're going to be making a monthly interest payment. Okay. Total number of payments. Let me see. What did I do? Oh, 15. I should talk. Yeah. Okay. Total number of payments. You don't got to do nothing. You to always want to calculate that. Okay. Here, this, this is what you're looking for. What's my mortgage payment going to be? That's why you're not going to touch this. Boxed in. That's what your mortgage payment going to be. For uh, shoots and giggles. I'm trying to not curse at all no more. For shoots and giggles. Which are some of your payments? Oh my goodness. Some of y'all going to be freaking out. Oh my God, I'm paying $534,000 on a $200,000 loan. Guess what? No, you're not paying to your tennis plan. Okay? Okay. Your interest costs, you're going to be paying, uh, of all the money that you're paying, $332,000 is interest. It's okay. Your, your tennis paying it. All right? So let's say, for instance, I just... Put this in here. You're going to use rental meter. For those of you who don't know what rental meter is, let me know in the chat. I can give you all a little demo. Say no rental meter if you don't know what it is. You're going to look at your expected income, rental income per month. All right, yeah, yeah, we're going to give you a little tour. You're going to look at your expected rental income per month. This is an estimate. You can run rental meter. It'll tell you what the, what the average rents are in this area, but you're still going to have to say, hey, our, our rent's going to be falling. I got to make a I got to make a call. So you can just shave off, I don't know, a couple bucks. Let's say it's $1,500. I don't know. Maybe this is something where you can get $2,300. I don't know. We're just making stuff up right now. We can absolutely analyze a deal. If y'all want to analyze a deal, we can do that. Yes, I use the median rental, and but you need to have the, the premium version, which I have an affiliate for that. We're going to go through that in a minute, Ralph. Guess what? Guess how much you're cash flowing on this property? $14.13. That's without insurance, taxes, and expenses. But I don't know. What if you can get $2,300 for it? I don't know. We don't know. This is not a real deal. We're making numbers in. We're making numbers up. So what I want you to see, we just went through this number. What I want you to see is um, what I want you to see is certain things that will change this deal. So if you are going to say, for instance, the interest rate. Mark said you can get as low as 6%. What did we say? All right, what was it? What was it at 8%? 814, that's a whole $200 a month. You go to another bank, have your ducks in the road, they ask you a few more questions. And you could be all up in this at an extra $200 a month. Right. 
here's the other thing too, right? What I want you to really see about this, this deal is, this, I'm glad you said it. it looks like the deals I've been seeing a lot lately. This is key. This is going to change your outlook on things. This spreadsheet says, hey, if you max out at the total amount that the bank lets you max out, you don't have to max out at the total amount. You know when you don't have to max out? If you get this deal at, let's say, you know, a lot less than your all-in cost. So I'm going to add another tab in here because I want y'all to see something. All right, so for this deal, let me, I'm a stickler about formatting. Okay, so for this deal, the max, the loan amount, if you max out at 75%, you're all in at, they're going to give you 202. This is great because it's going to cover your all-in cost. What and did I just mess up on? It's going to cover your all-in cost, right? Like you're going to be, be able to pay off your hard money lender, pay your credit cards back, whatever you use to buy this deal. But what if, remember your maximum MAO is 6,500. What if you get it? At 6,500, you say like, look, this deal is not going to make any sense to me. I, I'm cool. So now you're all in at 175. You no longer have to max out at 75%. You can max out at, I will go a little higher than this. 70%. And then I think we originally had this at 8%. Right. And then let's say the expected rental income, I think we had it at $1,500. Hear me out. Right. So originally this number, this number was like $15 and 17 cents, something like that. Just by making sure we get this deal at a lower number, we got a little bit, we, we found a hundred extra dollars. Is that enough to rescue this deal? No. But what I'm saying is you do have some wiggle room by way of the asking and making sure that you don't cash out at the max. But it's really important that we as investors band together and really get these prices down because sellers have got to get the message that, hey, you're selling a distressed property. The only person that's going to want to buy your distressed property is us. And the numbers got to make sense. Not willing to lose money on a deal just because you don't want to come down on your prices. This is what the price is today. Okay. For those of you who are not math people, please, please do not feel, I need to make sure we all understand what I'm saying here. What's a good number that will rescue this deal? This is a made up deal, first of all. Your rehab budget is probably not gonna be this high. Let's be very, very clear. We're gonna go and look at a real, we're gonna give a real example. Somebody pull up a deal that you've been looking at and yo, we're gonna fill these numbers in, okay? A, a full gut rehab that you've been looking at. Say me if you got a deal. Cause I could go, um, I can go pull something up, but I want you, I want y'all, it'll be easier if you dictate the deal to me. Okay. So get back to the question. What would, what's a good number that will rescue this deal? A good number that will rescue this deal. Let's say for instance, you want to be all in it. 40%, let's say you do 40. 
So then that means that you can you can cash out at you can not even be able to cash out at point six. This will help you out. It's still not enough to cover insurance. But again, rental income will probably be higher. <laughs> okay. This is a made up deal. I want to give us a real uh, example. Alyssa <laughs> said, and sellers have $50,000 water bills and they, and they want the asking price you pay the water bill. <laughs> That's the truth. Alyssa said, that woman was crazy. I know I saw you post a note in the band group chat about that. <laughs> and they want to pass their non-paying squatter tenants off at the full price. Hello? They do, but this is what we signed up for. It's still better than having a job, right? Who is confused? Who has questions? Yeah, you have a job and still dealing with it, but is this the type of deal? That, I mean, it's stressful, but it ain't. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to pick your poison. If we didn't have to work, then it wouldn't be work. <laughs> I know my point that I'm making is that I know both, both, most of y'all do both. Y'all is real life superheroes out here. My point that I'm making is which one would you like to do full time? Because you're doing this by choice. If it wasn't work, then it wouldn't be work. Uh, always comfortable to know what a cat comfortable cash flow is on most deals. I like to, right now, so scary. I like to at least be pocketing three hundred dollars a month. All right, the kids, the kid got a deal. So hopefully you got these numbers in here. Oh my goodness, I'm not reading what you just said. <laughs> oh, Dada said for this scenario to work, you got to pay five dollars. All right, so the kid got a deal. Okay, so, all right, Zakia, what's the asking? <laughs> Go home, Roger. <laughs> uh, 69,000. All right, how many, do you know what the rehab budget is or do you know how many square feet it is? Eighteen. All right. Let's see. For instance, this is Detroit. This deal not gonna make no sense. No. We doing a hundred dollars a square foot. We don't got time to really look at this deal. We doing a hundred dollars a square feet, a square foot. It's gonna be one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars to rehab this deal. Okay. All right, what's the current ARV? Do you know or do y'all need me to look it up? Not sure of the ARV. All right, let's look it up. We're going to hop on over to prop, prop stream. That's a big house. That's a good thing about Detroit is they got these big houses. Let me share my screen. Let me share. Oh. What was the address again? Oh, that's right there. I hear the people that just got to my house. I got guests. They can't hear the CJ video. It's on something like this. You need a discount on PropStream? Use my PropStream link. Betterthansuccess.com forward slash PropStream. Get a free seven-day trial. Irish, post a link, please. All right. So let's look at this house. I'll come over to comps and nearby listings. Oh, sold in 2017 for 28000 That's fun. These comps ain't looking strong at all.
All right. So this one all mess with Detroit. Let me look at this deal right here. It was just sold. It's substantially bigger than the subject price. It's no pictures. I was hoping that it was going to be pictures since it was just sold. Let me see if I can find some somewhere else. Did I find? Yeah, there we go. If this thing is nice on the inside, this, I can tell you right now, I don't even want to go through the rest of these numbers. This is not a good deal. Man. I mean, it ain't super nice, but there's no way if that other deal is a full gut rehab, there's no way that this is even going to come close. These numbers are going to come close to making sense. Even if you spend half that amount of money. Now, how much was it sold for? $92,000? Mm -mm, terrible deal. We started looking at Detroit area. All right, Alyssa gave us a, another link. Is this the subject property? Oh, give me another deal. This is the original part. Oh. 69. So it's not a full gut. It, I mean, it do need a substantial amount of work, but these numbers still don't even make sense. You have to get the deal. You have to be all in at 69. I mean, it's substantially bigger than the other deal, but we're not even close to this deal making sense. Somebody would just have to move in and it would just be as is. I mean, if you want to buy some, buy this deal, see what the rent, this might, if you do lipstick on a pig on this, this is not a, and don't do a full gut, you got to see what the mechanicals is doing. But if you do lipstick on a pig on this, maybe do another paint job. It's pretty clean. Those baseboards need, need some new trim. Let's say this is cool. I mean, I don't know. Y'all see this down here, this caulking? This, this is a little messy down here. And of course they didn't really give y'all good give us good pictures but this is messy probably need some new cabinets it's already getting too expensive this might be able to clean up this is nasty to me <laughs> but okay this this not a good deal y'all <laughs> this not a good deal you have to put way too much in this to um make it make sense let's see what the rents are Let's say you didn't put anything in it. $69,000. And then what was it? A three, what? Four, two. Oh, let me log in. Hold on. Let's see my account still active. There we go. I have the wrong address, it's up the street. It'll still pull the same information. It'll still pull the same information. How do you put into? Wait, why does it keep giving me that address? I'll I'll swear to you. One five zero four five. Here we go. Okay. These rents is too low. This is stressful. This is stressing me out. <laughs> this is all the way stressing me out. I'll be looking at the the average. Um, Ralph, you asked me that question already. All right. Let's go and check these people out at Eddie's request. Eddie be rogering, but he be knowing stuff sometimes. All right, let's pick one of these. Let's pick any one of these deals. Cedar Avenue. Um, get these rest of these for right there.
नहीं होती है This ARV might be something substantial. Let's run a comps on it. Oh my goodness. I don't really look like, I mean, I don't know. I, I can assume. Oh Lord. <laughs> I already said I'm whispering. I am whispering. <laughs> I'm just giving commentary as a whisper. Yeah, that's definitely some version of hoarding. Let's look at the, the ARVs of this. What's the address here? Let's see if this was even worth our time. Oh, you had to put in headphones? I was whispering that bad? I was doing like ad libs, like you know how you uh, in a rap song. <laughs> what an ad lib! You be doing ad libs. All right. See, my mic is turned all the way up. Uh, let us see. How many bedrooms and bathrooms is this one? Uh, let's come back over here really quickly. Four tips. Another four tips. Three hundred thousand for three two. It'd probably be hard to find a four two. We might be cooking with some oil on this one. Here's one for three fifteen. Oh, it's a duplex. Never mind. Are these all duplex? And that was single family. Okay, and this is up the street. All right, so let's say it's let's say three fifteen. Let's say three fifteen. Now we might be looking at something. Okay, this might not be a full gut. You do gotta. You're gonna have to do some sheet rocking. I don't know the the ceiling was open. I don't know if they actually made the repairs. This kitchen don't look like it need a lot of work. You definitely need some flooring. These cabinets look salvageable. It really all depends on how much you got to put in it. What is the... Oh, shoot. I want to see... Oh, there it is. 1,200 square feet, so it's not that big. So theoretically, if they didn't do a full gut, which is not, you're going to be spending 120000 That sends this deal in the wrong direction. Let's go to our spreadsheet. What did they originally say they wanted for this? 185? It still sends our deal in the wrong, wrong direction. You literally only got room to put like 15 grand in this thing. So you, this is when you gotta negotiate your prices. Okay, 185, let's say Let's say for instance, so what did we say the square footage was? Square footage was 1,200, is this the right? Yeah, 1,200 square feet. Okay. I lost my screen. Okay, 1,200 square feet. If you do a full gut, you're gonna be spending 120. But we already know that that's going to make this deal not a good deal. So let's say, for instance, you end up spending 50. It's still it's still going to be a bad deal. I can just do the rough math in my head. But let's say you just spend 20. 
let's say you spend 20. You just get some new flooring and paint and that's it. And and sheetrock that area. That let's say they fixed it. <laughs> flooring, paint, that's it. That's all that's needed. Let's just be inside of that. Okay, current ARV, we said we're gonna go with like 315, because that 32 went for 300. So we add another 15,000. I'm just guessing for an extra bedroom. So if you if we think that prices are going to come down, the projected ARV is 283. If we want to be all in at 400 to make up for the rising for the fact that interest rates are rising and home values are dropping, we want to be all in at 60%. Let's say we say 70%. Sorry. We could potentially say 178 to just so that we're all in at 70%. But then the problem is we're all in at 205. And we let's say we do a max cash out at 75. 212 at 8%. Let's say we get one of the good lenders, 6%. Our mortgage is. 1274. Okay, let's see what the income, what the rental income is. All right, let's come back over to rental meter. 9346 Academy Road. This is a 4 2 as well. 2100. All right, let's come back over to our spreadsheet. Looking like some things. You ain't doing too hot. It's doing too bad. You ain't doing too bad. You just got to get the deal. At 178 and be all in and have a rehab budget of 20 grand. I don't know what that you, you really have to look through that property, but I can tell you probably gonna spend more than 20 grand. But where do you make up for that? You can say, oh, you know, hey, let's um let's say you do get it for 178. That actually increases everything. Because then you don't have to, so you're all in that. So let's say if you can go to 70%. You can go to 70% cash out. Uh, you might need to stay at, you might need to stay at 65 to make it work. Because you're going to have taxes, title, insurance, all the miscellaneous costs at closing. You don't want this number. So like, just really quickly, let me tell y'all what I was looking at. I was looking at this number, the max loan amount, 98, versus you're all in at 98. So you'll just have just enough to cover this, but you already know that there's always a bunch of extra stuff on that on that HUD. So it's never going to be, you know, exact around the number. You got taxes, insurance, title, all that stuff, right? So you want to keep this at, max out at 65%, you might, you, you might even want to max out at 60% just to keep it nice. But then if you max out at 60%, you really got to get this number down though, because then look, your loan amount is only going to be 170. That's not enough to cover what you all in it. So you might want to have 40% rule. It's nailing at 150. I mean, it's making the paint, it's making it a better deal. You just have to get your negotiation on. The more of the story of everything that I'm saying to you here is two things. This is what I wanted to show you via math. Two things. The answer is, how do you negotiate deals in falling prices, rising interest rates? Two things. You got to make sure you negotiate your deals down. 
The other thing is you cannot max out of your cash out. I don't say you can't know that that's a variable. You can choose to go lower. And so now your costs are down. But if you go lower and you make sure you get the deal at the right number, you're still fine. You still may not be pulling money out of your pocket. But it really all depends on you making sure that you get this deal as low as possible. If they're st stuck at a really high number, they're not pricing it for a real investor. Right. We, we've we all seen deals where it's like the you ran them at the numbers don't make sense. And then they're sticking on this high number and you're like. Y'all not pricing it for investors. Don't call me. I don't know who going to buy this house with the hole in the roof and, you know, so on and so forth. But that's really an investor special and y'all don't got investor special prices. So but you might you don't know. What will happen if you offer this deal, if you offer them? They want at 185, you offer them 150. You don't know what will happen. Stranger things have happened. But those are the two areas where you got to make sure that you are on top of things. Hey, I need to have enough room in this deal to where I don't I don't cash out. I don't max on my max out on my cash out. The beautiful thing is usually when you don't max out, your interest rate drops too. Here's the other thing I want you to, to understand. When you're analyzing deals, the name of the game is no. Some of you see a bad deal, like y'all saw this. Y'all saw this bad deal, right? Oh, one of our members is calling this right now. <laughs> um, we're calling my cell phone, not us, me. Um, you see a bad deal, you run the numbers on a bad deal, and then you get discouraged. And you're like, eh, these deals don't make sense as bad. No, listen, as an investor, even when deals, even when there's a lot of deals out there, you're going to run the numbers on at least 20 deals before you find one good deal. The name of the game is no. If you're well and ready to pull the trigger on a very first deal that you see, unless you're in deal hunting lunch hour, right? Because <laughs> those deals, like, you know, we're, this is what we're doing. We're trying to find a good deal. Or deal analysis lab and tutoring, right? If you're an investor and you pull the trigger on your first deal, the first deal you run in numbers is, is great. You don't know what you're doing. You should be turning away most deals. So don't get discouraged. Like we just ran one one deal, numbers on one deal, and it's trash. That's to be expected. Okay. Tracy said, why does the interest rate drop? Because it's usually a matrix when they send over you, when you do your cash out, they send over a pricing matrix and they give it on the matrix. It gives you these different options. Hey, if you take 60%, this is what your rate is. If you take 75%, this is what your rate is. If you take, if you do 15 year mortgage, this is what your rate is. If you do a 20 year mortgage, this is what your rate is. So you have many different options that will dictate what the rate is going to be. And so most of the times, if you don't max cash out, they will give you a lower rate because you got to think about it from the bank's perspective. They're giving you less money and you're still putting the same lien on the same home. <laughs> so like, I oh, will cut you some slack. <laughs> right. Alyssa said a lot was trash before I found the one. Exactly. And so I want to just say to you that the name of the game is no. When you go to sit down and do deals, you should feel like Scrooge. <laughs> you should feel good when you're saying no to everything. And then when you do find that one, you're going to be like, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh. this don't make no sense. Mark raised his hand. Mark wants to be unmuted so bad. Are you still here, Mark? How many people are not members of him? 
Let me know in the chat before you start talking, Mark. Hold on. I just unmuted you. Hold on. A uh, lower max cash out would lower the loan cost because you're recouping. Uh, a lower max cash out, or I should say a lower cash out, not the max, will lower the loan cost, will lower the interest rate because they're saying, hey, we're going to give you less money for the same lien on the same property. So we would rather do that. So we're going to incentivize you. Hey, you were going to give you a lien on this property. I'll give you the lien for 60,000 as opposed to 90,000. I'd rather do that. <laughs> you have the same lien. We'll incentivize you. Hmm, we'll give you a cheaper rate. I'd rather do that. Okay. Mark, what you got to say? No, I was just going to follow up because um, the, the question about why does the interest rate drop? Um, some people have never been through the loan process, so they don't even know because they've never had these conversations with a bank or a mortgage company. Whenever you're um, borrowing money and you're securing that loan with, you know, say a house, um, the money's less expensive if you put more skin in the game so if you're doing a refinance it's the same concept uh as if you were buying in the property if i'm buying a house for three hundred thousand and i put 50 percent down then that means that if i don't pay them the money back they get the house and they keep my 150 they're walking away with a good amount of equity in that property the bank's able to recoup that quickly that's why they give you a break on the pricing so always be mindful of that um just in general like not just when you're refinancing obviously but when you're borrowing money too that's going to affect it and um just to i don't i don't think i can hammer this home enough what nicole's telling y'all is gold the biggest challenge that i'm seeing for a lot of people um specifically investors in this market is that they we're running numbers based off of where comps were at in 2020 and 2021 when interest rates were in the twos and the threes. And now they're going under contract for properties to sell them and they're not profitable or they're trying to refinance out of them and they can't. I mean, we talked about it, but I talked to a gentleman a couple of weeks ago that he's got a $500,000 loan, $545,000 loan out for a property that is never going to appraise for that because he didn't run his numbers up front. He was just blindly listening to someone's advice. So even if you're working with a real estate professional, you always want to make sure you have a good grasp of the numbers because at the end of the day, you're the one who's uh, butts on the line. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. That was good. Ralph asked me, I forgot about going through the analyzer. <laughs> My spreadsheet is all you need. I will go through the analyzer real quick. Real quick, only that first tab though. Um, that's not right. I, I'm, I legit almost forgot. Okay. All right, let's come back over here to the acquisition and construction budget. Um, this is just a nice spreadsheet so you can see put in what your acquisition and construction budget is. So like you can take that other tab and then drop the numbers in that I put in there. Once you negotiate, you use the other, this this cash flow calculator tab and you negotiate the price, you drop that price in there. This is going to start calculating all your soft costs, like really what the numbers are. Cause this is rough, this is rough math. It's not calculating your closing costs and all of that. So this will calculate all of that okay so let's say for instance the this for this deal 150 20 all right so your purchase price is 150 and then i think you said 20,000 i'm not going to go through well, you know what let's do this say that's that and then we said we we're going to do flooring let's say we spend 10 on flooring and 10 on paint. Those are both askew numbers, but we just, 
I don't feel like going through all that. Y'all get the gist. Repercent contingency. Okay, 23,000, right? Your total acquisition cost is this. So let's say your loan to value is 90%. The lender will lend you 90% loan to value. Your projected loan amount is this much, plus your financing costs. Interest rate, 12%. It's pretty standard. Let's say, for instance, they're charging you for your uh, draws, expect the number of draws, expect the number until property sold or refi. Let's say it's, you know, sometimes it'd be 12 months. Let's say it's 12 months. You're going to end up spending 26000 in interest. What is this number? And, and loan costs, I should say. Mark wants to say something else. Let me unmute you. You can unmute yourself. I never took that. Or are you still hand raised? Good. Whew. I'm sorry, dude. Did you just ask me to unmute myself? I thought no, no, no. I thought you your hand. I never lowered your hand. I'm sorry. Does anybody have any other questions? Why is the loan to value on the funding ninety percent? You can change this depending on what your lender does. This is not. That's why it's green, so you can fill that out. Everything that's in color is depends on your deal. That's where you fill it out. I don't know. I deleted it. It was something that was in here a long time ago. What is the assumptions area? I don't remember, but it wasn't a part of formulas. I think it was just something that like, oh, you know, I got to replace the mechanicals. I got to replace this. Just, I don't remember, but it was nothing important. I probably should just delete this whole area, but it wasn't a part of formulas. Anybody else have any questions? I'm waiting for you to ask me questions. So this is what I'm going to do. Every time I get on here, I get massively hungry. And I got my family in there. My baby came home. My dad picked my baby up from school. Uncle Bill is here with Aunt Jenny. And I'm hungry. <laughs> so y'all going to wait till tomorrow for these spreadsheets <laughs> for me to send y'all these spreadsheets. I would have I would have had it prepared, but I legit was like going through everything. I was like, I can make something better. So I made some of this stuff and, and made it better. Wouldn't that be the contingency? No, the contingency is down on the lower left corner, 15% contingency. So when you're analyzing, you do this the first and then offer the the and then the other one to lay in the construction cost. Honestly, I can do this this first, this last spreadsheet that I almost forgot to do. I can do this in my head. Um, most of the times, if sometimes people need to see these construction numbers out and see it all laid out. Because I've analyzed so many deals from a hard money loan perspective, this is just for your own entertainment. So you can see where your money's going for real, for real. The other spreadsheet, that's why I wanted to create the other spreadsheet because I'm like, I think this is where people get caught up when they're analyzing deals and not seeing where the variables are. That's why I created that one. Because I was like, once I put this in here, it's not, I, I was making a connect, a, I was struggling with making a connection between where people are having, where people see the variables and just analyzing the deal and looking at what the, what the, the costs are. And so what I really wanted you to see is that I did that whole first spreadsheet really honestly to make the connection to show you that your variables are your acquisition price and your how much you cash out at. And 
And so you're going to have to play around with it to make it make sense if this deal is worth anything. Because if I said this to you and didn't show you the spreadsheet, if I said, hey, you don't have to cash out, it, they'll go one ear and one out the other. You don't have to max cash out, go one ear and right out the other. Ralph said, yeah, those numbers are great for the beginner investor. The sheet that the hard money guy I spoke to wasn't that detailed. Of course not. Um, how different are the gross margins from the deals you've done on the East Coast? What do you mean, Mark? You unmute yourself. I don't know what you mark whenever whenever you want to make yourself. Any other factors we need to consider, such as construction costs? That's really kind of fixed. I mean, you can always negotiate line items, but construction costs and labor, like it is what it is kind of right now. So that's why I didn't even go down that road. You could, but really honestly, let me be very clear. Construction costs, anytime someone gives you a construction cost. It's always an estimate. So if you negotiate and that guy says it, let's say a roof or an HVAC guy says, yeah, I'll do your HVAC for 10,000. And he's like, no, can you do it for eight? And then they go in there and then they end up being like, this has happened to me before. Dang, we're, 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 we're back stock in HVAC units. I had to get a more powerful unit. You can either wait six weeks <laughs> or I can do the more powerful unit and it's going to cost the 10,000 and you done bought your whole everything relying on the 10,000, bought your property relying on the 10,000 or it might be 12,000. It might be more. Or, Hey, you know, let's say you negotiate everything down and then something unexpected comes up. Or they're like, hey, the, we saw uh, during the pandemic, the cost of lumber just shot up. I'm sorry. We can't, we, I know I quoted you 5,000, but it's going to be six and there's nothing I can do about it. I know I promised you this number, but my guys was moving slower. So I had to pay extra for the labor, whatever. So you don't really have that much negotiation wiggle room. You can negotiate absolutely, but and when running your numbers, you don't have that much wiggle room with construction budget. You do have wiggle room with acquisition, or you could, you should, right? And you can choose not to max cash out. Tracy, hopefully that answered your question. Do I have any other questions for me? All right, I'm gonna send it to y'all tomorrow. I'm gonna get up at the crack of dawn tomorrow. I'm going to prepare this and I'm going to send it out tomorrow. I like to send out my email blast, schedule them the night before, but I'm not gonna do that because I hear them having all kinds of fun outside, <laughs> outside my door, my office door. And I miss my baby. <laughs> and I don't know if I can sit here for another 30 minutes without, because if I open the door, it's a wrap. I am not going <laughs> to, I don't know if I can sit here for another 30 minutes while they have all the fun. And I do not. Oh, you're in Amsterdam, Ralph. I love that. How do you factor in leads? I would just add that to the acquisition number. Okay, everyone. Really quickly before y'all go, don't forget the Women in Real Estate Summit is coming up. You need to be there. The early bird pricing is going away. Soon come. Members, if you buy a regular price ticket, you have a discount code in the band. 
pull up. Also, we got a bunch of events coming up. I did. I forgot to mention this too. We had so many things. Um, so Camille's got the event on the twentieth. Mark is doing speed dating in Philly on the twenty seventh. Then October, we're having another in person event in Philly. We got a big wholesaler, a big time investor, Frank McGovern. I don't know if y'all know him. He spoke at our very first large event. He was killing it back then. That was back in 2017. He's going to be at the office on October 4th. And off-market property exchange. We got a lot of events in Philly. Y'all got four events back to back every week, starting next week. I don't, y'all need to be there at all of them and tell your friend, bring a friend, bring a different friend to every one of them. For those of you who are out here dating, bring a different dude. Show us your skills. Bring a different chick. Show us what you got. Thank you. Yes, Ralph, I love that for you. I'm traveling for this paper big time. I love that for you. Ralph is our member. He works on a cruise ship, y'all. Send him some love. He in Amsterdam right now. Tracy said, any good deals in Amsterdam? Thank you, Odata. Thank you, Raji. Thank you, Rafiq. Mark said, if you're a wholesaler within two to three drive hours of Philly, you should be there on October 4th. Absolutely. Ralph said, it's a lot of deals in Amsterdam. Y'all have to take this conversation over to the group chat. All right, y'all. Love y'all. I want y'all to have a great night. Everybody should be at Wire for, for real. If you're a member and you're not at Wire, I'm really going to feel some type of way. You need to be there. This is... This is our recital. Thank you guys. Love y'all. Have a great night.